Think not the Lord came for peace on earth. He came to his sword. Shalom in the name of the Lord, everybody. Well, time night, watch him in time and night, watch him in time. A commentary, information, Bible prophecy stuff. And here we are today at NF Pesach. You're now currently looking at the Seder table in my humble abode. Now, we basically followed the Passover Haggadah. Now, if we go moment by moment, day by day, this would be the time of the day since it's now early in the afternoon where Jesus probably had died at a cross. He's given up, he's given up his spirit. Uh, we know the, the curtain has uh, rended asunder, uh, probably right before the priest was about to put the blood on the, on the curtain. And then Jesus, of course, has rushed off to the tomb simply because Sabbath. This very moment, chances are 2,000 years ago, tables not unlike this one was set up for the Jewish people in celebrating the up-and-coming Passover Seder. Now, the difference is, of course, we're more conventional, Europeanized. We have these tall chairs. Chances are the table was closer to the floor, and they probably sat on big cushions. They rec almost reclined, if you will. So they were really, really comfortable. It was very, very comfortable um, uh, motif, if you will. And, it, and that's what makes this whole exciting. So, again, we want to remember that, you know, the timing is impeccable. Remember, this is Erev Pesach. It means at sundown tonight, it officially starts the Passover Seder. Now, of course, around 4 o'clock p.m. our time, we'll start the Seder, which is usually about an hour long. It requires lighting up the candles, the reason why we celebrate. We address all the uh, commandments in the Torah that are just such a thing, why the Almighty God requires it, and we people read comprehensively. Uh, for one person next. So everybody basically joins in the Passover Seder. Even to the time of, uh, of uh, drinking the first cup of wine, which is poured, and that's the cup of sanctification. And like I said, there's a lot to it. And, a lot of people, and it's sad for, for generations this has been ignored. But again, we've talked about this before, about the spirit of Antichrist in Daniel 7.25, that his attempt to change times and laws. Now granted, there are some traditions interwoven with the Passover Seder. But sometimes traditions are really kind of good. You might see the egg there, which is symbology of a beginning. The uh, horse rash, you might see it's a little yellowish white right there in the center of the Seder plate. And that's the bitter, essentially bitter herbs. And there are custom bitter herbs, which kind of make of a, a sandwich, which is like known as Hallel, which is a bit of the symbol of the temple in of itself. And now we know, of course, by the giving of the Holy Spirit, which we'll discuss when we get to Shavuot, which is like seven weeks away from now, about how the body now becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. And really need to be careful with that. You know, how what we put in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very important. And we have the more bitter herbs. We have the lamb shank. Of course, anybody who doesn't know what the lamb is at this point, they're truly mistaken. But yeah, the lamb is a symbology of the Paschal lamb, which is sacrificed for our sins. And we all know who that is. It's, it's a non It's a non-issue. But, you know, some people do get issues of it. And we're going to use the symbolism of the red roses and the white flowers, basically the red, of course, of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we even symbolically put red uh, garment that symbolized the blood that was put on the doorsteps or the doorposts of the children of Israel when they were in Goshen during the time of Egypt. So everything plays its part. Uh, if you can see over there a little bit to your right center, that's, uh, that's where the Afikoman is or the uh, middle matzah, which will be broken during the middle of the uh, Passover Seder, and which is later on hidden away for the children to look for. And hopefully whoever finds it, they will end, they win what we call gelt, which is basically chocolate-covered gold, silver thingies, basically to symbolize you know, what, what, was, what was taken out of Egypt. And then again, what was the price of Jesus' uh, treason and sedition by, by uh by Judas of Iscariot. So a lot of the symbology is involved there. We'll have the lighting of the candles, as I said. You can see the Passover Seder plate in the middle. Uh, tonight we will, ha we will have matzo ball soup, uh, along with other customary foods. They like said lamb, we have potato latkes, and the list goes on. There's a lot of food to eat. And again, this is a feast of the Lord. Now understand, there are seven feasts of the Lord. If you haven't heard this in my previous post, the seven feasts of the Lord, three are mandated by God. This is known as a holy convocation. This is those convocations we read about later on in the epistles where you should not, should not avoid the gathering together of your brethren. Because this is very important to do. Whether you're a non-believer or a believer. For Jew Jewish people who were at the time in their orthodoxy, I'm sure they would participate in still the sacrifice. For us as believers, we knew the sacrifice was fulfilled and completed. There was no need for the sacrifice anymore. 
And yet people say, well, Jesus did away with the laws and commandments. And you'll find nowhere at all in the Bible, whether it be New or Old Testament, that Jesus did away with the laws. Let's put it this way. If Jesus did away with the sacrifice in and of itself, then why is he standing on the right-hand side of the Father? So no, not even the sacrifice is done away with because Jesus is sitting at the right-hand side of the Father. So again, all of his laws and commandments are fulfilled, they're completed, and we as his servants, if you love him, as he says, you will keep his commandments. So this is basically the opening moments. We're just a couple hours away from starting. I won't broadcast that because that's a little more personal and intimate. So I hope you all have a good Pesach on this Erev Pesach. And remember, there is only one way, one truth, and one life. In Jesus' name, amen.